All right, so this is the new Lenovo Legion phone. It's the Dual 2, and it's just on a whole nother level. So we've seen some really nice high-performance phones come out this year already, right? The ROG Phone 5 is one of them that comes to mind. This is a gaming-focused phone where they have an optional accessory a fan, like a cooling system that you can clip onto the phone to improve the thermal performance of this device. But what would be even better than a clip-on fan than one that is built right into the phone? So this has two fans, an intake and exhaust, but when you have a cooling system that's built into the system, like was engineered as part of the device itself, it is way more efficient than having something that's a exterior accessory, right? Because you're able to make contact with the thermal components directly when you have a cooling system like this. So when you have a system that's actively cooled like this, you're able to squeeze out the most possible performance that you can from the chipset, which is a Snapdragon 888. And this device is very focused on performance. It's configured with some powerful components, but it's also equipped with this side-mounted pop-up front-facing camera. I've never seen anything like this. And I gotta be honest, it's kinda cool. Maybe I have a soft spot for pop-up cameras in general, but it makes perfectly good sense. Now, to get a grasp of what's really going on here, we have to talk about the aesthetics of this device. So this is a very unique looking phone. Its aesthetics are built for gaming. It's symmetrical right down the middle, so when you grip it, it has this controller-like experience. I mean, that's what they're going for. It doesn't feel like a controller. It's not even close, but it's significantly more comfortable and more ergonomic in your hand than a regular slab phone. The curves and design lines on this phone make it a little bit easier to hold when you're holding it up in landscape mode for playing games or watching any kind of media. And then because this whole thing is about that landscape life, they got to keep it symmetrical and they don't want bezels or hole punches. That'd be too easy. You got to go for the front facing side mounted pop-up camera. It's the only way to go. So this thing is 44 megapixels. It can do 4K at 30 frames per second, and it can do background removal for live streams. It's very powerful hardware. And when you're using the phone in normal portrait mode and using it for like a video call, it comes out the side. And at first I thought it'd be weird, right? But it's actually, a it's a nice location for a front facing camera. For one, your eye, like if you're looking at someone on the screen, your eye is really close to the lens itself, right? So it looks like you're looking at the person you're talking to. It's a bit of a bonus feature, but it's also usable as a face cam if you're streaming off of this phone. Now they've mounted the hardware in a manner so that it maintains the proper aspect ratio like a regular phone. So even though it's coming out of the side and it looks like it might be kind of rotated because it's coming off the side, it's actually still a portrait image when it's upright. And then when you're in landscape mode, the image is landscape like a regular phone, just in case you're wondering. Uh, now the back cameras, they're nothing special. They're decent even in low light, but you're probably not buying this phone for its photography capabilities. Now on the back of this phone, there's also some RGB lighting. The Y logo lights up as well as the two fans, both the exhaust and the intake fan. And you can change the color and the kind of pattern of this light in the software. Now, if you're wondering what happens if you place this thing flat, right? Cause doesn't that cover up the fan? And it does, but I think this secondary vent over here allows air to go through and then out the exhaust, even if it's lying flat on a table. And there's also shoulder buttons. So there's four on the top, two on each side, as well as two rear mounted ones. And there's also some built into the screen, but I don't find those as useful. You can configure those however which you'd like. And there's also two haptic motors. So there's one on like each side of the device. So if you're playing games, any kind of vibratory or haptic feedback, you can feel it in a stereo manner. Is that even a word? Stereo haptics? But yeah, there's two haptics so you can feel it in a left and right manner. It's actually fairly noticeable in driving games and stuff, you, you can feel it. I don't know if it's applicable to every game out there, right? Some games just wouldn't make use of dual haptics, but you have it in here. Now, playing games on this device is awesome. It's Snapdragon 888 running at full tilt because of the cooling on the device. Surface temperatures are lowered, the frame rates are very consistent. This is a fast phone, the performance is fantastic. And the screen is also really nice. It's 6.92 inches, 144 Hertz, 1080p, and a touch sampling rate of 720 Hertz. It's crazy responsive. That means it's looking for input, pulling the screen 720 times every second. So it's one of the most responsive screens you can get on a phone right now. Now in terms of software, there's a performance mode to improve your gaming experience, and there's a slew of battery health focused stuff, so you can reduce the charging capacity or bypass the battery completely when you're plugged up playing games on it. And the battery in here is 
a big boy. 5,500 milliamp hours with two USB-C ports to charge it up. And if you're using this thing lightly, like you're not playing games, you can comfortably hit like eight, maybe even nine hours of screen on time just because the battery is so big. But when it's time to juice it up, this thing can take up to 90 watts of juice. So 45 on each side, and it'll power up the two batteries in here ridiculously fast. It took 14 minutes to get to 50% and just over 31 minutes to fully power up the battery from zero to 100. Like that's, that's a fast charge if I've seen one. Now, there are some things that aren't perfect on this thing. There's no headphone jack, which I don't like seeing on a gaming phone. And the water resistance, at first I thought there would be none, right? I mean, there's a fan in the back, but supposedly this fan system is water resistant, which would be very impressive if that's true. But the SIM tray doesn't have any kind of gasket or any kind of seals there. So if this thing goes in the water, chances are, it, it won't be good, is what I'm guessing. Okay, but that is the Legion Phone Dual 2 from Lenovo. It's gotta be one of the craziest phones I've ever seen on this channel. It's a big boy, but it is stacked with all the goods. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, one of the easiest things you can do to support this channel is give it a thumbs up. Okay, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.